Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in. So, as we progress in today's session, we'll be learning the statistical hypothesis testing. So, we'll look into what exactly is this hypothesis testing. We'll understand about the concept of null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. And we will look into the one of the well-known method that's called as a critical value method in performing the hypothesis testing. Then we will look into the concept of p-value method. How do we perform the hypothesis testing by referring to the p-value? Then we will understand about the types of errors that we generally come across in statistical testing. And then we'll take up a case study and a demonstration of the same so that you'll get a complete picture of this hypothesis testing. Now, before we get started, so how many of you are aware of uh, data science and what exactly that is going to do? So here, when we say data science, if I want to specifically talk about this data science here, data science is all about finding the patterns in the data by analyzing the data set in an efficient manner. Now, while finding the pattern, we are going to apply various concepts of statistics and to validate whether my assumption is being exhibited by my model. That is when we perform the statistical hypothesis testing. So the importance of this hypothesis testing is it will help us to validate whether it is a manual one or whether it is an automatic one. So that's the core idea over here. Okay. Now, as part of your learning journey in this data science with Python certification training program, in the module one, you'll have an introduction to Python programming language and the data science. And the module two is about working with sequences and the files. Module three is about deep dive into the functions, object-oriented programming structures, modules, errors, and exceptions. Module four is about NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. Module five would include the data manipulation with Pandas library. Module six is, is working with machine learning algorithms and learning the core basics of the machine learning algorithm. And module seven is about learning the supervised machine learning. And module eight is dimensionality reduction. And module nine is about the unsupervised learning. Module 10 is the reinforcement learning. As you can clearly see each and everything that is required for you to work as a data scientist and to become an industry ready are being covered in this data science with Python certification training program. And it follows a special learning approach that's called as a structured learning approach, which ensures that you as a learner will learn in a progressive manner. It doesn't matter from which background you're from because of the curriculum design, you will be able to follow along and become an expert in understanding which technique to apply while analyzing the data set. Okay, now coming back to our session's agenda, what exactly is this hypothesis testing? Now, when I talk about hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing is a statistical analysis. Here, we are going to put our assumptions about a population parameter to a given test. Now, we use it to estimate the relationship between two variables. Okay, let's take up an example. So we assume that, okay, for a Maggie noodles, okay, so we assume that for a Maggie noodles, there is a lead content of less than or equal to 2.5 ppm. Now, this is my assumption, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is, so if you think about the production of Maggie noodles by a Nestle company, they will be producing lakhs and lakhs of products. Now think about testing lakhs and lakhs of products every day that is going through each and every product and testing it. So obviously you cannot test each and every Maggie uh, product which is being produced by the Nestle company because one, you will be using entire stock in your testing. It will be lost for the business. And even it's not a recommended one. Think about 10 lakhs of Maggie packets that you have to test it, how much time it will take. So obviously, we cannot test each and every Maggie product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a sample. Maybe out of 10 lakh products which has been prepared by the Nestle company, I'm going to pick up 10,000 products. So 10 lakh product is the population. And from that population, I'm going to select a sample in this example that is 10,000. So once I select the sample of 10,000, 
then okay then i'll go ahead and perform the analysis on this 10000 packets so what it means is once i like instead of testing on the 10 lakh products i'm testing on 10000 products and whatever the outcome that i'll get i'm going to generalize it for my entire population let's say out of 10000 packets that i have sold so i found that all the packets is having the lead, lead content of less than 2.5 then i will report that okay the maggie is safe and the lead content is less than 2.5 okay that is the overall way in which that we are going to interpret this scenario okay so that is how we are going to interpret the same here when we talk about the hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is an act in statistics where an analyst tests an assumption regarding a population parameter in the previous example here we the population parameter is actually my lead content in the maggi noodles which is produced by a nestle company so that we are going to test that assumption okay for the population parameter and this methodology employed by the analyst depends on the nature of the data and the reason for that analysis okay so that's the overall idea so if i want to give you some more examples of statistical hypothesis so hypothesis is nothing but the assumption maybe we've got a teacher or we've got a lecturer a lecturer assumes that 60 percent of their college students come from let's say uh, like higher middle class family so these are all just the statements or people who smokes they are more productive or women use more social media than men so these are all some of the assumptions that we have so once we have this assumption we call this as hypothesis and we are going to test this hypothesis in order to test this hypothesis that is our assumption we are going to select a sample from the population and then perform the testing here the method that we use it to test it always depends on the nature of data and the reason for that analysis so that's the core idea about this hypothesis testing now while performing this hypothesis testing so we have null and alternate hypothesis so here the null hypothesis is the assumption that the event will not occur okay it's a it's something that the event will not occur so a null hypothesis has no bearing on the study's outcome unless it is rejected and we have something called as alternate hypothesis alternate hypothesis is a logically opposite statement of my null hypothesis so if i accept the alternate hypothesis it means i have rejected a null hypothesis to give you an example i have mentioned that smokers make more sale than men or non smokers okay or vegetarians miss flu few flights so we have we let's do one thing let's take up a hypothesis okay vegetarians miss few flights now if i have a hypothesis that is my assumption like this this will be my null hypothesis okay this will be my null hypothesis hypothesis which says that vegetarians miss few flights so we are going to have an alternate hypothesis in this alternate hypothesis what we would say is it will be logically opposite to what we see so logically opposite can be something as okay vegetarian like vegetarians miss more flights so that can be a logically opposite statement so null hypothesis is the current assumption and the alternate hypothesis will be the logical opposite statement of the null hypothesis and we will perform the hypothesis testing whether to validate whether whether the null hypothesis is correct or whether the data that we have got follows the current belief or whether it follows the alternate belief so that's the overall idea in the scenario team that's the importance of null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis now that you have the basic understanding of this null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis so let's proceed ahead yeah this is another example where i've got a hypothesis where hypothesis one which is my null hypothesis says that accused is is innocent 
and the logically opposite statement is the alternate hypothesis where accused is not innocent okay so that is the overall idea about null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis we represent the null hypothesis which the which with the help of the symbol h0 or the null hypothesis so null hypothesis refers to the existing belief about a population so we assume that the status quo is actually true that's our assumption and we have something called as h1 we represent this h1 with alternate hypothesis now this is a logically opposite statement of my null hypothesis in this scenario so we are going to check the overall condition so what we will do is we are going to consider the given statement and we'll perform the testing to validate whether it follows the null hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis okay so now that you have understood about what exactly is this null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis let's take up a question to get a clear picture about the same so here we've got a question that says that edureka employees takes an average commute time of 35 minutes to reach the office and come back to their respective respective homes from office now in this scenario what exactly is the null hypothesis so in this example the null hypothesis is the one which is our current belief which is nothing but edureka team or the employees take an average commute time of 35 minutes to reach the edureka office and they take the 35 minutes to reach the home from the office okay so that's my null hypothesis and my alternate hypothesis is the logically opposite statement which says that edureka employees takes more than 35 minutes on an average to reach the office so that is the first step we define our null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis so if the null hypothesis holds good then our current belief holds good maybe the current null hypothesis is accused is innocent so that's my current uh, null hypothesis if the data follows else it will follow the alternate hypothesis which says that accused is not innocent okay so in this way we are going to specify uh, specify the same next here in this scenario so if i go ahead with the alternate hypothesis we are going to reject the null hypothesis so here when we are formulating this null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis suppose if your claim statement has the words like at least at most less than or greater than then in such scenarios you cannot formulate the null hypothesis just from that claim statement so what you have to do is you have to create something like this okay so the rule to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis is like this so if you like it's like equal to greater than or equal to or less than or equal to so these are the ways in which you are going to formulate your null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis is the opposite of it let's say if i'm using equal to it is like all uh, not equal to if it is less than or equal to then it will be greater than if it is greater than or equal to it then it will be less than so this is how we are going to formulate the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis okay once we formulate this null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis then we will go ahead and perform the testing now in this example i have made use of greater than or equal to sign hence okay in my alternate hypothesis i've got less than so in my null hypothesis uh, in in this scenario okay, i think on yeah if you observe i've got a greater than and hence in the below one i've got less than or equal to so that's the overall way in which that we are going to formulate the null and the alternate hypothesis now that you have understood about null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis now let's understand about what does it mean by a critical value method let's take up a scenario so we've got a viral and averell's claim is average accuracy in archery is 70 now over the five games of archery this is how the data is so the average score is 
So if I've got the average score is 20, then it is less likely to believe the scheme, claim. And average score is 65, it is more likely to believe his claim because this is much closer to the value of 70. So we have got a claim that is 70. Now with the average score as 70, now if I'm, if I'm saying that average score is 65, then it is more likely to believe because we've got the detail or we've got the information that the value is 70. So which is, uh, and the 65 that we have got, so it is closer, okay? So the 65 that we have got is closer to 70. Hence, this is more likely to believe the claim. So in this way, so we'll get the value. So in this example, the mean is 70. Okay, and let's suppose if my value is 50. So like we have in order to ensure that, okay, whether it's whether it holds good or whether it holds, uh, whether it does not hold good or not, we are going to look into the confidence values. Okay, on the left hand side, you can see the lower confidence value. And on the right hand side, you would observe the upper confidence value. So we will check whether it, it is present in that confidence value or the confidence region. Okay, now based on the values that we have got, so then we are going to where exactly the value would lie, whether it lies in the lower, less than lower confidence region or greater than upper confidence region. So if we, uh, if we get in that specific scenario, okay, in such scenarios, so we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in this example, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis because it is present in my acceptance region. Okay, if I have any value which is in the acceptance region, then in such scenarios, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if I've got any value which is greater than, uh, like which, which appears in that red region, I would say that's a region where we would say that we are going to reject the null hypothesis and we follow the alternate hypothesis. Okay, that's the overall idea in this scenario. Now, in case if you are if you are working on two tail test, so the rejection region on both the sides of distribution. Now, in the if I'm performing the lower tail test, then in such scenarios, the rejection region on the left side of the distribution. And if I'm performing the upper tail test, then in that scenario, the rejection region is on the right side of the distribution. Now, let's take up an example. Here, we have got a AC store, okay? And this data over here describes the distribution of AC units per store during the summer. Now, this is the information that we have got, that is the distribution of AC units per store during the summer. Now in this scenario, okay, so let's say we've got the sample of 36 stores. Then what we do is the first step is to formulate the hypothesis. So we'll define uh, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is 350, which means that there is no change in stored status quo. And the alternate hypothesis is the one which says that average is not equal to 350. Now, once we define the hypothesis, then we are going to select the sample. In this scenario, we'll look into the sample of 36 store. So in that scenario, the sample mean can vary very far from 350. Then in such scenarios, if I've got a sample mean, which is very far from the assumed mean, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis and we are going to accept the alternate hypothesis. On the other hand, if I've got a sample mean closer to 350, then in such scenarios, we do not reject the alternate null hypothesis. We just proceed with the null hypothesis itself. So that is how we will make use of the critical value and then perform the analysis. So in this scenario, so we've got a mean, and then I'm going to calculate the sample standard deviation, okay, which is given by sigma divided by square root of n, that is the number of rows that have got. And from there, we are going to calculate the values. 
okay and here this describes about the sampling distribution of x so once i have the value of sigma so i'll check on the upper confidence value and based on that where like based on this so where depending on where my data points would lie i would decide whether to follow the null hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis okay so that's the overall idea of this critical value method now here once we formulate the hypothesis the steps that we would generally take in order to follow uh, like the steps that we generally take using this critical value method is first we are going to calculate the value of z from the given data set at a specific significance level okay it will be alpha so like let's say it can be five percent okay now once we specified the same the next thing that we are going to do is here we are going to calculate the critical values that is upper confidence value and the lower confidence value from the value of z now once we calculate the critical values from the value of zc so we'll make a decision on the basis of the sample value mean sample mean x with respect to the critical values that is upper confidence value and the lower confidence value so with all these values we are going to decide whether it follows the null hypothesis or whether it follows the alternate hypothesis so this is called as a critical method next we have something called as a p value method now in this p value method so what we will do is we are going to check the value of p okay we are going to check the value of p now in the scenario of uh, p value method first we'll find the z value for the sample mean now once i find the value of z the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to get the respective p value now depending on value of p so this p value describes the probability of obtaining the result at least as extremes as observed okay so here like it's the probability of obtaining the results at least as extreme as the observed results of a statistical hypothesis test so assuming that my null hypothesis is true so with this we'll get the value of p and on the basis of the value of p value we are going to interpret whether it follows the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis now with the value of z we can get the value of p score and with the value of p score so we will check whether it the whether it with with the respective value of p so like the p value whether it is less than 0.05 or greater than 0.05 based on this we will either accept the null hypothesis or we are going to reject the all uh, null hypothesis so that's the overall idea when it comes to the approach of the p value method so in case of p value method the steps that we follow in this hypothesis testing are first we'll calculate the value of z score for the sample mean point on the distrib on on the distribution using the p value method then we'll calculate the p value from the cumulative probability for the given z score using the z table and this is followed by making a decision on the basis of p value with respect to the given value of alpha okay so these are the steps that we generally follow in order to make a decision using a p value method so you are so you are now familiar with two methods one method is called as the p value method the other method is the critical value method now that you are familiar of about this now let's go ahead and understand the types of errors that we have got whenever we are performing the hypothesis testing so during the hypothesis testing so we have got type 1 error and a type 2 error so in order to determine whether it belongs to a type 1 error or the type 2 error we find it with the help of the confusion matrix so confusion matrix helps us to describe how my model is confused in which scenarios my model is actually confused when it is performing the classification so type 1 error means when the null hypothesis is true 
but we are rejecting the null hypothesis and going with the alternate hypothesis. So that is what that is a scenario where we call it as a type one error. And we've got the type two error and this would occur when the null hypothesis is false, but we fail to reject it. So these are the two kinds of error that we generally come across while performing the hypothesis testing. Now to get a better clarity on this, let's take up a case study. Now in the scenario of case study, so let's say we've got the total number of success, uh, successful search, search is given by CTR, which is nothing but the total number of searches. Now, as a data analyst at Scriptcart and the product, like as a, now let's say you are a data analyst and the product manager comes to you and claims the following that the search CTR has been increased from 35% to 40%. Now, this is what uh, we are going to check. Like here, we are going to test whether the claim made by the product manager whether it has whether it is statistically valid from the given data or whether it is statistically invalid now in order to check that you are going to perform the hypothesis testing so the formulation of hypothesis testing is something like this first you are going to define the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis the null hypothesis says that okay there's a 40% ctr that is say that p is equal to 0.4 and the alternate hypothesis is P is, P is not equal to 0 0.4. So first step is defining the null and the alternate hypothesis. So you're going to collect the data. Let's say you have got the data of CTR, okay, from the given data set, and you've got the information about searches and the clicks, okay? That is what you have got over here in this given data. Okay, now, once you have got the population from the sample, you are going to collect from the population, you're going to collect a sample and you will focus on the sample mean. Here the sample mean, once you find it, so this is what we would get as a average CTR. So the average search CTR is given by 0 0.39. And the sample mean is 0 0.39. And we have got the sample size as 7400. Okay, so with this information, we are going to compute the test statistic. So I'll calculate the population variance. And once I compute my population variance, so I'll get the standard deviation. So with these values, we'll get the respective Z score. Z score is given by X minus mu divided by standard deviation of a sample. Okay, now once we have done this activity, so we'll get the respective test statistic in this scenario, the Z score. Now, once I have the Z score, I'm going to check uh, the scenario, okay, with the alpha as 0 0.05. So I'm going to check for a given data, okay. So what exactly will be its respective P value? Now with the value of P, I'm going to decide whether it follows the null hypothesis or whether it follows the alternate hypothesis, okay. So that's the way in which that we are going to interpret the results. So now that you have seen how we can perform the hypothesis testing, let's take up an example. So here the uh, Z test is given by critical, like in, in case of Z test, we can do by two methods. One is critical value method and the other one is a P value method. So while calculation of Z, Z value, we'll be finding the standard error, which is given by population standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. And apart from that, we've got the T test and the T distribution. So coming to the T distribution. So this is a diagram which describes the T distribution. Okay, so T distribution a little bit sh uh, shorter and flatter. So at the sample size beyond 30, so the T distribution becomes approximately equal to the normal distribution. Okay, this here, we use this T distribution when we are uh, calculating the T statistic with uh, D like with degrees of freedom is N minus one. Okay, this is how we decide whether uh, to use the T distribution or normal distribution. So if I've got a large sample, then I'll use the normal distribution. If I've got a very small samples and population variance is not known, then in such scenarios, we use the 
t distribution and there is something called as a two sample mean test now in this two sample mean test so here uh, under this two sample mean test we've got two uh, like two sample pair test okay and two sample independent test let me show you what it would mean so here like two sample test under this we've got paired and we've got unpaired or an independent so we, this is another kind of testing that we have got and we've got two sample proportion test and the ab test so these are the various uh, hypothesis tests that are available in statistics which we can apply it on a data set all right team now in order to implement this in python programming language we can make use of various functions which are available inside the scipy library and you, from the scipy library there's a specific module called stats let me show you the official documentation of the same so this is the official documentation page of scipy.stats here we've got various statistical functions under the scipy.stats so like various information we we can find then alpha uh, continuous variable see you can excuse me if i want to uh, find the chi value we can actually get it using the chi function so you can check out the various uh, functions that are available in the scipy.stats okay so you can also uh, check as well and learn about learn more about the various statistical functions that we have got with us under this scipy.stats all right team so with this we come to the end of today's session so as part of our learning journey today we have looked into what it means by hypothesis testing and how do we perform the hypothesis testing so thanks again for joining in and i'll see you next time take care everyone